Today, I'll be unboxing and trying on the new Seiko SSK003, and we're gonna find out if it's the best automatic GMT watch under $500. Let's go. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack. Baby, I'm bad. I just wanna get caught up in this life, I'm crazy, I'm bad. Doing no cap, only God wants you better go live it up. Cash in the bag, stadium pack. Baby, I'm bad, yeah. baby, I'm bad. I just wanna stay bad, stay mad, shit by my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast. I ain't gonna take that, stay back I'll be swinging on till the hits come in all caps I ain't gonna lay back, pray that someone's gonna help me Ain't nobody like that I ain't gonna wait, that's all fat Give me one shot and I'll never get the throne Alright, so I have to admit that at a young age I was a really big Seiko fanboy When I was first getting into automatic watches One of my best friends routinely wore the Seiko SKX dive watch at the time, I really wanted to get a Seiko dive watch, but you know, you can't get the exact model that your friend wears every day. So instead I opted for the Seiko Turtle. So I wore my Seiko Turtle for several years and I really enjoyed wearing it. But as I began advancing in my career and making more money, I did eventually upgrade from Seiko to other Swiss watches. So today I oftentimes find myself going for something like my Tudor Black Bay 58 and the Seiko Turtle kind of sits on the shelf. The most recent GMT that uh, I've added to my collection would be the Tudor Black Bay GMT. And this Tudor Black Bay has actually served me well as a travel companion. Now, one thing about the Tudor GMT is that it is still kind of an expensive watch. So while it does make a great tool watch, sometimes I've been in situations where I don't really like having this one on my wrist specifically if I'm traveling in areas that I know are a higher crime area. So I was excited to see that Seiko released these SSK GMT watches. Number one, because they have that vintage styling of the old Seiko SKX. And then number two, it has that GMT function, which I find extremely useful because in my industry, we use 24 hour time as our standard way to record time. So I actually think that the design of the Seiko SSK is very close to the perfect tool watch for me personally. So let's change perspectives and I'll go through the unboxing. All right, so I ended up uh, purchasing this one through belk.com. I was able to buy it on sale with a coupon code instead of it being uh, $475, it was 380 bucks. This is how it comes in the packaging. Just be clear, this video is not sponsored in any way. I spent my own money for this. So it looks like pretty typical Seiko packaging. Cardboard box. And there we have it. It's already ticking. So we have a box, hang tag, the cushion. It has the typical plastic wrappings on it. I'm going to go ahead and peel those off. The product model on this one is the Seiko SSK003. has a $475 suggested retail price. And the SSK003 also has the blue and black colorway on the GMT bezel. All right, so with all the links, let's go ahead and get the weight on this. Hundred and fifty-nine grams, we'll call it. Let's get the overall dimensions. I believe by spec, it's supposed to be forty-two and a half millimeter wide case. Should be about a forty-six, forty-five and a half. Lug to lug thickness. This is a pretty chunky girl. I'm getting 13.7. The lug spacing should be 22 millimeters. And it tapers down to, we'll call it 18 millimeters. And then at the clasp, uh, 19 and a half millimeters for the clasp. So the dial on this one is a blue sunburst dial, has applied indexes with uh, LumaBright. The interior rehot is actually marked with a 24 hour time. So you can use that red 24 hour hand to tell GMT time. The bezel is bi-directional and just friction fit. So there's no clicks or anything 
So this is a bracelet that has solid end links, uh, kind of bit of a jingly jangly jubilee. The clasp is a just a pressed, cheap pressed clasp. So they did not include a, a milled clasp at this under $500 price point. Crystal itself is Hardlex, which uh, I have found does perform a little bit better than standard mineral glass. I haven't had a huge issue with Hardlex, but obviously Hardlex is cheaper than Sapphire. So let's flip it over and look at the uh, movement through the see-through case back. Movement on this one is the 4R34, which has about a 41 hour power reserve, automatic winding, 24 joules. This one does have a hacking function. And this one is what we call a collar GMT, not a true GMT. This one does not have a screw down crown. So at the home position, when you wind it clockwise, it will actually wind the watch, pull it out to that first position, rotating it clockwise actually jumps the 24 hour hand in one hour increments. And then to wind it counterclockwise, it will quick set the date. Pull it all the way out, hacking, allows you to set the time. So on this bracelet, they're using, it uh, looks like split pins. So you can simply push those out in order to resize it. And also looking at this clasp and bracelet, it does not have a quick adjust feature, but it does give you, uh, it looks like four total micro adjust holes on that clasp. So in order to size this bracelet, I need my block my pin tool and the mallet. So in order to decide which way uh, the, the split pin should be pushed, you'll see these arrows that indicate the direction that the pins should be pushed. So I can just line it up in my block. Now I'll go and do the same thing with the other side, check where those arrows are pointing and push the split pin in the direction of the arrow. So once you've taken out what you believe is the correct number of, of links, you will then push your split pin in in the opposite direction of the arrow. So now I will push the split pin in toward the arrow, not with the arrow, and leave the split end of your push pin facing out. And when I'm using my mallet now, I will use the, the plastic side of my mallet to limit damage to the bracelet. And I'll usually give it a small tap or two on the end of that split pin, just to make sure that it's nice and flush with the bracelet. Then I'll repeat the process on the other side. Another cool feature about this one is it also has what we call a holes case. So you can easily remove your bracelet from the case. Just like that. So once you get the bracelet approximately sized to your wrist, you can then use the uh, micro adjustment to kind of fine tune it just to get that perfect fit. So I'm gonna adjust this one a couple millimeters tighter. One of the things that I like about these Seiko SSK watches um, and the SKX is that four o'clock crown placement. While some people don't like the way it looks aesthetically, it does actually make it so that it wears really comfortable on the wrist. Overall, I'll say that this watch um, was is a reasonable value for the price I got it for, right? I was able to get it at a discount uh, for $380. The MSRP at 475 I do feel like is a little bit expensive, especially with Seiko using some of the cost cutting uh, measures that they took on this. For 475 bucks, I really would expect Sapphire Crystal, a milled clasp, 
maybe a little bit of a longer power reserve. But overall, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. So there you have an unboxing, sizing, and my first impressions of the Seiko SSK-003. Is this the best GMT automatic watch under $500? Or do you think there's another contender that we should think about? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always guys, wear your watches.